a woman passionately holds a pink baby's jumper in her hands, saying that she can't wait to tell her special girl that she's her mother. An older woman enters the bedroom and slaps the woman's face. She grabs the clothes and asks the young woman what she's doing with her baby's clothes. The woman tells her mother that the baby is hers and that she's really upset. She lied to her and said that they're sisters. The mother shouts that Karen can't know she's not her mother. Karen hears it and enters the bedroom. She asks what on earth she's saying. The alleged mother tries to cover up the situation, but the girl says that she knows she's not her daughter. The woman claiming to be Karen's mother encourages her mother to tell her the truth. The old woman gets really angry and screams at her daughter, Madeline. Upset, Karen asks Madeline if she knew it as well. The older woman says that they all knew and that they kept it a secret for her own good. Karen gets really upset with them and walks away. Madeline asks her mother why she did that to her daughter. She says that she might have lied to her for 17 years, but now it's over. The mother reminds Madeline that she ruined her life because she had to look after her stupid daughter for 17 years. Madeline says that she never asked her to and that she was perfectly capable of looking after her own daughter. Her mother says that maybe she would prefer to tell everyone that she got pregnant when she was very young, and that she also didn't know who the father was. Madeline says that her mother is lying and walks away. Angry, Madeline's mother throws the baby's clothes on the floor and insults her daughter. Meanwhile, Karen cries on her own, sitting on the stairs. She tells herself that she needs to find out about her real parents. Her real mother approaches and sits next to her. Madeline says that she's fed up with their lies. She asks her if she really knew that that woman wasn't her mother. Madeline tries to tell her the truth, but her daughter refuses to hear it. Madeline explains that she's not her enemy and that she's only trying to help. Karen says that if she really wants to help her, she can help her find her real parents and walk away. Madeline thinks that it's still not the right moment to tell her daughter the truth. Days later, Karen goes to the office of a man who investigates stories like hers. She tells him her life story and explains that she desperately needs to find out the truth about her upbringing and everything. The young man says that that's not really his thing, but he can recommend her to a good therapist. Karen says that she's not looking for advice or consolation. The man says that if she really wants to investigate her family legally, he needs some documents and pictures of a member of her family. The girl then shows the man a picture of what she believes to be her sister. The man takes a good look at it, looking a bit confused. Later that day, the girl returns home and is greeted by her mother. Karen says he doesn't want to talk to her. Her legal mother says that she thought she wanted to talk about her parents. Karen then gets closer to the woman and asks why she lied to her for so long and to tell her the truth. The legal mother says that she's sounding like a detective or something. The mother mocks Karen, says that her mother is a prostitute, and insults her biological father using racial slurs. Karen tells her to shut her stinking mouth and be more respectful to them. The racist laughs and says that she finds it so funny that she's defending someone she doesn't even know. Karen says that she wants to meet them. The racist woman slaps Karen's face and says that she's ungrateful, just like her sister. She says that her stinking father wouldn't care about her because she believes raising a child is up to classy people like her. Karen begs her legal mother to please tell her the truth. The woman threatens to make things worse for the girl if she doesn't stop talking about the subject. She says that she will never find out anyway, and she walks off. Karen goes upstairs. Days later, the investigator pays a visit to Karen's mother. He greets her with a hug, but she backs off and says she doesn't want to talk to a coward like him who has neglected them for 17 years. The man says that he really needs to talk. Madeline says that he should have talked to her 17 years ago instead of just neglecting them. He says that she never told him that Karen was his daughter. Madeline asks how, on earth, he knows that. The man, named Jesus, says that he's an investigator, and Karen went to his office to ask about it, but he had to refrain from telling her because she's underage. He says that he just wanted to investigate a bit further because she looked desperate. 
Madeline asks how he was so sure about it. The man says that Karen showed him some pictures, and one of them was hers. Madeline says that it doesn't matter because he left her when he found out she was pregnant. Jesus explains that he only did it because her mother threatened him to. He says that she visited his house and threatened to kill him and his entire family. He explains that he was only 15 and was properly scared about something like that. He says that he feels like the scale of suffering in that family is still immense. Madeline says that her mother took advantage of her right to be close to her daughter. Jesus says that he wants to help them out. He says that he spent all those years thinking about their daughter and how their relationship would evolve over time. Madeline says that their daughter deserves to know the truth, and they embrace each other. Days later, the girl pays another visit to Jesus' office to see if he finds something else about her parents. Jesus says that he did and that it was much easier than he thought. He says that her mother didn't mean to leave her alone, nor did her father. He explains that it was all her grandma's fault that she wanted to separate her from them. Karen says that she's happy to hear the good news. Madeline suddenly approaches from behind. She says those news stories are the best in the world. She reveals to Karen that when she was 17, she became pregnant, and nine months later, she gave birth to a beautiful girl. But Patricia, her abusive mother, did everything she could to ruin their relationship and keep them apart. She then evicted her from the house and threatened Jesus' life. Karen asks if that means that they're her parents. Jesus says she's right, and that's why he said it was easier than he thought. Madeline says that she understands how hard it must be for her to understand that, but she will do everything she can to make her happy. Jesus says that it will be hard to assimilate, but eventually she will live the best days of her life. Karen becomes flabbergasted. Madeline says that she waited years for that day. Karen asks why they never took care of her. Jesus says that he was very young at the time and was very scared of Madeline's mother's threats. Madeline says that her mother threatened to let her starve. Karen says that she thinks they can be very happy together at last. The following day, Madeline is caught carrying a travel bag by her abusive mother. Her mother says that if she leaves that place, she can forget all her chances of coming back. Karen tells Patricia that she's the one who's leaving. Patricia smiles and says that she's glad to see her daughter there. She lies to Karen that her alleged sister, Madeline, is evicting her from the house. Karen says that she likes her acting, but she knows it's rubbish. Madeline tells her mother that the only thing she feels for her is disgust. Patricia overreacts and says that that's her house and that she won't leave. Jesus approaches and says that according to Madeline's late father's will, he left everything for his daughter, Madeline. He then hands Patricia a copy of it so she can have a look. Madeline tells her abusive mother to just get out of her house. Karen says that before she goes, it's good to let her know that she's owning that family for two million dollars in repairs. Patricia says that they're stupid and that they can't do that to her. She says that she will get her stuff first. The family stops her and says that everything she claims to have was bought with their late father's money. Madeline says that those things belong to her as well. She drops a bag on the floor and tells Patricia that she can have the items in the bag. Patricia says that they can't do that to her. Karen laughs and says that she's done. Jesus says that if she doesn't want to go, they can always call the police. Patricia rips the papers and throws them on the floor. She picks up her backpack and says that they're surely going to regret what they did. The family ignores Patricia's threats and embraces each other as soon as she leaves.